Welcome back to Ways of Learning. What are we doing today? Well, today is a glorious day. We are learning how to make toffee, chocolate covered toffee. So if you want to know how to make a heat bar or something kind of similar like to it um, on your own, you're in the right place. And what I, this, what's amazing is it's so easy. I didn't realize how easy making toffee is. So, um, and you probably have it at home already because it's literally a cup of butter, a cup of granulated sugar, a cup of chocolate, milk, milk chocolate or dark chocolate M&Ms, and a splash of uh, vanilla. Now you can dress it up if you want to put nuts in it or if you want to put um, a little bit of salt in it, and that is it. I'm using parchment paper to make it simpler to in there, and the last thing you're going to need or want is a thermometer. And this is, I'll put it in the link in the description, this is a thermal pop, but just so you can get it in there because the, the secret of making it is you're continuously churning the butter and the sugar. Uh, you can put a little bit of water in there too, and you're going to continually stir that for about 15 minutes until it reaches what's called uh, hard crack, and that is at um, 300 degrees. And so you want your thermometer to measure about 300 degrees. What will happen is you'll start stirring about the eight minute mark. It's going to get to about 200, 225, and kind of like cooking brisket on the on the pellet grill. It's going to kind of stall out. And it's going to take a little while for that water to evaporate and that, that, um, that sugar to kind of start to harden. But when it hits that 300, that's when it hits the magic and that's when you take it out and pour it in here. So that's really all there is to it. It's pretty simple. So we'll get, as they like to say in the uh, candy industry, we'll get crack a lacking. All right. So we're going to use parchment paper to kind of line our baking sheet and um, I didn't. I just learned what parchment paper, what, how, what it, the purpose of it, besides writing. Um, but I just learned what the purpose of it in the kitchen was this year. And uh, hats off to the two French scientists, Jean Andre Paramed and Louis Figure, because they figured it out like in uh, 1847. So pretty cool invention. Uh, makes cleanup pretty easy. So the easy way to do it, align it, is you're just going to take a piece of parchment paper. Um, I always do curl down to cut it and you just literally start in the corner and you come in about to where you think the bottom is, just a couple inches, not very not very far, don't overcut it. And then you just kind of come in over here. It doesn't have to be totally exact, it just has to be kind of close. Just really a little bit past your corner. It's kind of what I always do. All right, and then you're going to take like olive oil or something, and you just kind of spray it a little bit in here, and then you can swirl it around with your fingers. It's really kind of like a hot glue. Um, then I turn it curl up, curl upside, and then you just literally stick this bad boy in there in the corners. And if you did it somewhat close to right, it's going to stick. You can kind of get the corners down. And if it's not, you just, you just cut them a little bit. And if not, you can do this. You can spray a little on your fingers. And then you can literally just dab the back. And that bad boy will, will stick. But for us, we're just doing um, the caramel really isn't going to be that deep. So you can, you can cut it as you need to. You're really, you're really just wanting that bottom to be uh, perfect. And that's it. That's kind of how you do it. If you're a little more exact, it'll look a little better, but you're really just kind of looking for that clean basin. Um, that's it. That's how, to, that's how you line it. So this is ready. We'll set that over and wait for the hot caramel. Okay, so we're over here at the uh, kitchen. We're going to get to the stovetop and get to cooking. Now you want to want to make sure you turn this to medium heat. You want to get a fairly thick um, pan. This fairly deep. Um, that you're going to put your sugar and your butter in. And then you're also going to get, um, want to get a wooden spoon. I'll put a link in the description both to scrape. This is what happens if you use plastic. Uh, used it last night. Didn't go well um, when I made the other one. So anyway, and then you're just going to continually stir and make sure if you're not churning, you're burning. So that's the key. And uh, we'll get we'll get after it. All right, so I put a little water in there just to kind of help it along. I cut up my butter, but you're going to put your butter in there. You cut it up, it just tends to 
melt a little faster. And it does help if you get it to room temperature. This is not, but like I said, I'm going to heat it up and then you're going to put in a cup. This is, these are third cups of granulated sugar. And you're going to turn it to medium heat. Once you turn it on, don't really mess with the heat. I guess you can, but I try not to. I've only done it once, so uh, speaking from experience. And then I have on hand, I've got my, right next to the stove, I've got my parchment paper dish. And I've got my shot of vanilla. And I've got my thermal pot pin turned on, ready to go. And then really just going to start turning, stirring. And remember, if you're not uh, churning, you're burning. And that's the thing. I think where it goes wrong is if you think you can get away with it. Now, I set a timer, and I, I think uh, on my phone and just watched it. And so I think as I'm taking temperature, and I think going forward, I'll be able to just do it by, by watching it and looking at it. Because what will happen is, is as you go... It'll start boiling, and then when it kind of starts slowing down a little bit, like it's popping less often and it's kind of turning the color, you can kind of see it's getting close to that hard crack stage. So I think if you do it a couple times and watch your phone, then you can simply almost do it by watching um, watching the time, especially if you're doing it on the same stove with the same way. So your butter is starting to melt, it's about 95 degrees, so it's not even really close. So you're not really running really a risk of, of burning at this point. See how it's starting to turn that yellow? Nice, kind of, and it won't ever get, we're running about, ooh. We're at about 210 right now. It's starting to froth a little bit. Those thermal pops are really cool. I use them for barbecuing all the time. You're just going to keep stirring. It's going to start bubbling here in a little bit. It's starting to bubble now. And you can see it's just small bubbles and it's going really fast get really frothy. Like I said, it's pretty hard to screw it up unless you just stop turning or uh, stirring or you don't have um, and kind of are guessing with the temperature. Like I said, my sister-in-law would make it, bring it every Christmas, and it was awesome, and nothing against her. Hers was amazing, but I always thought it was, like, really complicated to make, um, and so I never really tried it, and then uh, I saw one day what the ingredients were, and I was like, wait a minute, there's only, there's only three ingredients. There's only vanilla, sugar, and butter. Uh, surely it can't be that complicated. So, like most things, it's figure outable, and you can uh, you can do it. And like I said, it's pretty low um, bar if you screw it up. It's literally you wasted a cup of sugar and a cup of um, butter, but it makes some awesome, awesome toffee. And I've I've seen or heard where people have done it with um, butter and condensed milk. And it's a little different, so I'm probably going to try that one of these days too. What the heck? Like I said, pretty low, pretty low bar of failure if you burn a little um, condensed milk and you burn a little uh, butter. So we'll try that next. So we're at like 226 when it gets this really frothy and yellow like this. This is kind of where it starts to stall out, and you just got to kind of make sure you really stir through it. But as the water gets boiled off and uh, some of that moisture out of the butter gets boiled off, 
then the sugar will start to get to what's called hard crackle phase. So at that 220, that's kind of where the, uh, like on, on a brisket, it'll stall out like at 180. And that's when you kind of just wrap it and get a little better. Here's just where you stir through it. It's kind of like hitting the rapids on a raft trip. You just kind of paddle through it and it gives you that momentum. But as long as you're stirring, you won't, you won't, you won't burn it. So fishermen would say reading the water and a golfer would say reading the green and a cook would say just kind of reading your pot. And as you as you watch what's going on in the pot, the bubbles are getting big, bigger and they're getting less often. So that means it's getting um, physics would tell us, I believe, that it's getting closer to hardening. So that's when you want to make sure you're checking with your thermometer. And we are. We're still at 2.30, so we're a ways away. So we're probably about the nine-minute mark, I'm guessing. So we got about four or five. So we're only about 240 degrees, but it kind of almost seems like it's it's risen about a half an inch or an inch, and it's all one kind of big, frothy, almost like a cheese. It's not thick like a cheesecake, but it you, you're, you're, you're moving it. So when I, when, I, when I stir, I'm not only moving the little area, but I'm moving the whole thing almost as a liquid, big liquid unit. Okay, we're getting close. We're up to 275, but this is just such a great Thanksgiving treat. If you want to kind of wow everybody and bring it for Christmas, and you don't have to tell everybody how simple it is. We can kind of keep that among us as friends, kind of a, just tell them it's a, it's, you know, just a, secret recipe your friend taught you um and we kind of keep the myth going that it's really hard to make a uh, heath bar caramel but i really kind of feel like if if you really like them you should share it because it's awesome they could make it at home you know you don't want to go to the store but you're kind of have friends over to play cards or you're going to have people to watch it come over and watch a movie or you're going over to a friend's house for dinner and it's like you can just whip this out in 15 minutes i mean then let it set you can there's two things you can you can let it set out after you're done for four hours and it'll be ready to go or you can put it in the freezer to help speed up the process for a little bit probably 15 20 minutes um, and then you can also put it in the fridge for two hours now if you put it in the fridge for two hours what will happen my understanding is it's gonna get kind of a moisture on the bottom and nobody wants nobody really wants a soggy bottom so um, what I would do is just make sure for that last, uh, an hour after you take it out of the fridge, you have it, you let it set, but I just go old school and let it set for, um, I just let it set for four hours. Let's see where we're at. Should be getting close. See how it's turning that color. It's turning a darker color. It's almost like a. We're at 285, 290, 92. Okay, it's turning that dark, kind of toppy looking color. We're at 296, 97, 98, 99, 300. All right, we are at the crackalacking stage. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it just a little bit off the heat and just pop in a splat. Oh, a little too much, but can't have too much vanilla, right? And then I'm simply going to stir it, make sure that's all mixed in. All right, got that mixed in. I'm going to continue to stir. from the heat so it should be should be fairly safe and I'm simply just going to pour it into my pan make sure you get all every drop spread it out how you want it you know you could make it into a fun little pattern if you wanted to. All 
right, so that's in there. Okay, we're about, uh, I don't know, three, four minutes, three minutes, 34 seconds. And we're simply just gonna take a cup, and this is the only cup we have. I don't know if we're on hard times, I guess, for measuring equipment at the house. And we're just gonna spread out the cookies. Like I said, it's just a cup of, we're gonna spread out the chocolate chips. And you don't want a whole bunch of chocolate on this thing. You really, and what, uh, I should have probably said, if you wanna do almonds, you'd put that in your, parchment paper at the bottom before you poured the caramel in first or whatever you want to put on the bottom and then you're simply going to spread out these chips and the whole purpose is, is you're basically making chocolate and it's just easier to spread out these chips and use the heat from the caramel to spread them out so then we put the lid back on and we're gonna let it set for four or five minutes and just use the heat from the toffee. All right, so while you're waiting, what I do is I kind of put everything away. And then now those chocolate chips, they're melted. And if they're not melted all the way, well, that just gives it a little bit of texture and a little bit of look. And so then you're simply just gonna spread it out. So it covers, you can use dark chocolate, milk chocolate, and then you can come back and finish it with sea salt, put pecans on the top, put almonds on the top, put crumbled up heat bar if you want on the top, whatever you kind of want, it's your, it's your creation, but this is how you do chocolate toffee. Get it all spread out. You can get it as rough as you want or as smooth as you want. So it's totally up to you. Just have fun with it. You are basically making a Heath bar at home that tastes amazing. So you take it out of the parchment paper and then you just simply take your knife and you just can cut it as neatly or as unneatly and break it up as you want it. Like I said, if you want to cut it neatly, it'll kind of crack so it's kind of hard, but um, So it is a glorious day. You've got this. Four hours later, you are going to have this and this stuff. Tastes amazing. So try it. Try it at home. Make it for your family and friends, and you'll be a hero. Thanks for watching.